Hey there YouTube, it's Bobby, aka Paginator, and I'm here today to do a wrap-up of my October reads. As I sit here filming, it is currently Halloween in the early afternoon, which means it's the last day of October, my favorite month of the year, so I'm kind of sad. But it's time to do a wrap up and I would first like to apologize the shelves behind me are a little bit scattered because I've had some stressors lately that haven't allowed me to like super organize everything so I'm very sorry I'm also sorry because quite a few of the books I read in the month of October were ebooks or books that are now in my classroom and I can't grab them and hold them up for you sorry but we'll start with one that I do have, which is Mexican Gothic. This one I actually started it on September 28th, but finished up on October 5th. So I'm counting as an October read. This one was super spooky, and I do have a uh, separate um, review that's spoiler-free for this book on my channel. So if you're interested in hearing more specific thoughts about this one, you can check out that video. Um, this one was perfect for spooky vibes and it had some amazing and fabulous descriptive writing in there that gave me the creeps like big time. Next up I read The Music of What Happens by Bill Connick, which is actually an audiobook that I listened to and I had gotten it from um, Audiobook Sync which is a program that happens every summer for um, audiobooks for teens and young adults and being a teacher of teens and young adults I also sign up for and get those audiobooks and I hadn't read that one and so I listened to it on audio and it was really lovely it is a um, romance between two boys um, so it is an LGBT title and it was super cute it's very much a contemporary romance story and it also involved food trucks so if you're into food trucks and you're a foodie in any way you might like that one um, and then I read three graphic novels that came in a scholastic book order and uh, they're now in my classroom. So I read Ozzie and Millie by Dana Simpson, which is a cute little um, tale of two friends, one of which is super feisty, and they're animals, I believe, if I'm not forgetting. Uh, anyway, I remember laughing out loud when I was reading that one. Um, I also read Razzle Dazzle Unicorn by Dana Simpson. And that's part of a series about a girl who has this imaginary unicorn and their best friends, and it's also quite funny. And then my third graphic novel was Diana, Princess of the Amazon, which is by Shannon Hale and Dean Hale. And it's kind of a younger childhood story of Diana, who eventually becomes Wonder Woman, Diana of the Mesquira. And uh, it was a fun story about um, her trying to create a best friend because she's the only child on the island with the Amazons. So... That was fun. Then we had another ebook, All Your Twisted Secrets by Ali or blah, blah, blah. Then we had another ebook, which is All Your Twisted Secrets by Diana Urban. Yes, Urban. And that book was recommended to me by a former student. She in fact emailed me and said, I need you to read this so I can talk to someone about it. Like, read it now. And being me, I took a couple of days to get through it, but it was an interesting thriller. It's definitely for older teenagers, maybe, um, it's just, just a lot of cussing and, like, some pretty violent things in there, so I don't know that I'd hand it to my middle schoolers, but it was a cool thriller, like, murder mystery kind of a situation about some teens who are called to a scholarship dinner in the basement of this restaurant and when they get there they find out it's not a scholarship dinner they're being trapped there and they have to pick someone to die or they won't be let out and the twist at the end holy crap okay up next we have a trio of books oops i just dropped the graveyard book on the floor Anyway, we have a trio of books or graphic novels, the Heartstopper Trilogy. I think there's going to be another one coming out, but for right now it's a trilogy. And this is another LGBT series. This is, again, a graphic novel, and it is about two boys who fall for each other. Um, the one boy is very out in his school, and he kind of was accidentally outed by a friend. 
and has been bullied and been through some stuff for that. And then the other boy, he's very much the athlete, the jock, hadn't really thought about dating a boy before, but things begin to happen between the two of them. I read the first two on my birthday, like while I was laying in bed before bedtime, I read both of the books. I tore through them. I was like loving them. So of course I immediately hopped on Amazon and ordered the third one. And that one came um, and I read it on my brother's birthday, which is later in the month. And also tore through this one quite quickly. It's uh, just again, super darling story and graphic novels. So they're easy to read. I'll just flip it open here and you can see the art style. It's very well done. I am really, 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 really enjoying this and definitely want to see if this author has more stuff out. While I was on this graphic novel kick, I also read a graphic novel adaptation of The Witches. And I'd love to be able to show you that one because it was so well done. But again, it's in my classroom for my students to read. I tried to read this thing. This was one that I pulled during my... Um, TBR like game for October and I had every intention of reading all of it and I got to page 153 and I just got distracted by other books and things happened so I want to come back and give this a fair chance and I'm not sure when I'll do that but it's Holly Black so it's worth making the time. Up next we have the Graveyard book by Neil Gaiman. I got this 10th anniversary edition from Book Depository, and I actually had never read it before. And I thought, you dummy, you need to read this book because it's won awards and it's like been praised so much. So I read it and, of course, very much enjoyed it. This is about a boy named Nobody um, who is raised in a graveyard by a group of ghosts. His family was killed when he was a baby, and he somehow managed to escape the house and made it up the hill to the graveyard and was taken in and adopted by ghosts that live there and one vampire. It's a very cute story about family and like how you have to teach your children to go and want to live in the world and then you have to let them go. It's rough. Next I read The Girl and the Ghost by Hannah Alkoff and it is a ghost story, middle grade ghost story, um, based in, oh, I'm going to forget which country it's set in, Malaysia. It's based on Malaysian mythology about a ghostly companion that's tied by blood to someone, and this ghost is tied to our main character's grandmother, and she passes away in the first chapter. So he goes to find a blood relative to tie his life to and comes upon this granddaughter who's a very young girl and when she's slightly older the ghost reveals himself and she says great I'm gonna name you pink and we're gonna be friends and they are until she gets a best friend and pink doesn't like that at all and he starts being pretty nasty and there were some scenes where I was like ah, I'm scared for her hmm. but anyway it was a very interesting read and um, I would highly recommend it. Again, sorry I can't hold it up for you. One of my students has it at home this weekend, and hopefully they are enjoying a good ghost story for Halloween. Then I read another ebook called Zero Repeat Forever by G.S. Prendergast. This is a science fiction slash dystopian story about a girl who's, um, like, the world has been invaded. It's It's been described as... Oh, the fifth wave plus Beauty and the Beast. Um, I don't know if I 100% agree with the Beauty and the Beast part, but it's very fifth wavey. The world has been invaded by these aliens, which are actually like cyborgs, and they're only trained to follow orders. But we have one named Eighth, who is an alternating protagonist. We take turns hearing from these two, and Eighth has feelings like a person. And then we have our other character, and... Um, what's her name? Raven. She, um, her boyfriend was killed by these aliens. And so her boyfriend's twin, her and a bunch of other people that were at this summer camp when the aliens invaded decide to depart and try to go find help. And Eighth and Raven are going to come in contact with each other. And can I tell you the feels like I was reading this book sitting on my mom's couch last weekend and I was going like this. <sighs> my mom thought I was going to have a panic attack. 
but I was just so like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Oh my gosh. And the feelings. This book was recommended to me by my cousin, Jessie, and she and I don't often agree on books. So when she recommended this, I was like, uh, do I really want to read this? But then I saw it was a young adult and I really, 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 really enjoyed it. And I definitely want to read the second one, but I need to take like a little break and do some middle grade or something for a while because the emotional toll that that book took on me, I haven't felt that in a long time. And I kind of just need to recover before I jump back into that story because Jessie messaged me the other day and she's like, I'm sitting at my desk at work crying over the second book. And I went, oh, I can't do this yet. I can't, I've got to prepare. So I'm taking a little vacation from that series. The third one, there has been some speculation on whether the third one's even going to be published. So let's hope. Anyway, moving on to the next read. I read another ebook for a graduate school class called Memorial Drive. And it is a memoir about a woman whose mother was murdered by her husband. And it was not the woman's father, it was a, her stepfather. Um, it, it was pretty terrifying in that the mom had a police protection order and the police were supposed to be there. Like there's supposed to be a policeman outside her house at all times. And the police officer that was there, I don't know what happened, if he had an emergency come up or if he was just bad at his job or whatever, because I know there are good policemen out there, but this one wasn't for whatever reason. He left. And sure enough, that's when the butthole stepdad shows up and murders her it's just baffling and knowing that that actually happened it was a true story like it was awful and emotional and terrifying and just yeah so yeah let's move on to happier reads shall we I attempted I tried this was another attempt to read the winter witch this was another one from my October TBR and I really enjoyed the parts that I've read so far, which is about two chapters and a little bit, but it's an adult historical fiction set in Wales. And there's something that's like just kind of blocking me. And I thought, you know what, if I want to read more during the month of October, I need to stop with this one because I'm just not getting through the pages. So I'm pausing that one and I decided to go middle grade for the rest of the month. So I picked up Gloomtown by Ronald L. Smith. Um, he is a Coretta Scott King Award winner, um, and this is about a young man who gets a job at a creepy old mansion working as a valet or a valet, and he signs a contract, and then after signs it, realizes at the bottom it says, upon pain of death, and he's kind of like, well, that's weird, but they're not going to kill me if I quit or find a whatever. Um, this is his friend Izzy, and she is kind of a witch. She reads cards, and she works at her family's inn. And they live in this town called Gloom, which is very foggy and gloomy. It used to be called Sea Bell, and ships from all over the world would come and dock there and do trade and all these things. But ships haven't been there since this gloom kind of settled on the town. Now, as he starts to work there, um, Rory is his name, and... Um, as he starts to work at this mansion, he learns about some super creepy things that are happening and he eventually gets threatened by the mansion's owner and butler, like his life is threatened. And so he and Izzy are trying to find out how they can stop the crappy stuff that's going down at this mansion because it's kind of scary and there's a lot to do with like paranormal creatures and shadows and how do darkness and light work and very, very interesting. And we also have a little mystery that he, Rory doesn't know his father. His father took off on a ship years ago when he was teeny, like before he was even born, I think, because I don't think the dad knew he had a son. And so he has no idea whose dad is and he has no idea why no one else looks like him because he is black and everyone else seems to be not black. And so that part of it, the story was interesting as well. And then today I finished reading, I started this last night and finished A Field Guide to Getting Lost by Joy McCullough. This is a book about Louis, Louis, I think is how you say it, Louis, and Sutton. And Sutton is very much into robotics and programming and she has this robot that she's working on um, and she just can't quite seem to get it to, 
to do the maze that she's been trying to train it to do. Um, and then Louis is very much into stories and he loves movies and loves books and he loves to create and write his own stories and he's created a character called Penelope Bell that sounds fantastic. Um, these two young people, um, Louis' mom and Sutton's dad are dating and it's starting to get serious so they're at the point where it's like okay it's time for our kids to meet and these two on a family date to a park in Seattle get lost hence the compass and the uh, wilderness setting on the front and they have to respect each other and and learn to help each other in order to get back to safety it was a super super cute book and then after I finished A Field Guide to Getting Lost, I started The Train to Impossible Places by P.G. Bell. I'm really hoping that I can finish this up today um, with trick-or-treaters coming and stuff. I, I might have a few interruptions, but for the most part, I fully plan on finishing this today. And yeah, I am also listening to Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. I got an audiobook arc from NetGalley and... I am loving that book so far. I, I'm only about three hours left on it, so we'll finish it soon. But anyway, that's my uh, wrap-up for October. It was a good reading month, even though some of it was kind of all over the place and not my TBR list very much, but we'll try to do better next month on that part. So here's me wishing you all a wonderful and bookish day. Happy reading. Adios.